Hey, 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 everyone. It's Jenny Fennig here. I'm going to get this up on Facebook for those who want to tune in like that. And we will get this show on the road. If you're tuning in here on Zoom, you can say hi in the chat. There is a chat button. You should see that. And you'll be able to connect with me and each other that way. Okay, good. Just getting set up right now on the live stream. While working from home. Come on in. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so say hi, everyone who's here. We're not going to be shy. We're going to reach out. We're going to support one another. We're going to do this thing. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to do it together. Because if there was ever a time to realize that we were in something together, it is now. And it feels kind of interesting because we're in it together apart. But we are in this together and we are going to work together to navigate through. Okay. So I'm so glad that you're here. We're going to breathe together. We're going to breathe together first. I'm also going to share. Everyone who's here, just tell me where you're connecting in from. We're going to start it like that. Hi. Okay. I see some people on Facebook. Excellent. Say hello in the chat. And tell me where you are connecting in from. That's an easy icebreaker, right? Sometimes we're in a new room. We're like, what do I say? <laughs> so we're going to start by saying, where are you connecting in from? That's an easy one, right? All right. I'm going to put this in a group of mine so it can be, you know, seen and shared and uh, consumed by those who need it most. Okay. Excellente. Excellente. Okay. So I am Jenny Fennig. We are here because you're ready to not feel so overwhelmed. Those of you who've been, you know, thrown into this homeschooling while working from home situation. Not everyone here works from home you know, in the traditional sense of the word, but we all know that we all work in some capacity, right? And right now our work has gotten turned upside down because of this global pandemic. And I realized, I gotta straighten my sign back here. Um, the work continues, it is time to stay fierce. And one of the ways we're going to do that is to show up for our children in the way that we can. Um, you all have been, I'm guessing for many of you, abruptly thrown into a homeschooling situation. And although I've been here for four years, I was abruptly thrown into this situation several years back, you know, when this first started happening. And so I want to let you know, I know how you feel. And what's going for you right now is that you are thrown into this with a lot of people. When I got thrown into this, I felt like I was really, really alone. And, um, and it, was, it was scary, you know? And I felt like, how am I ever gonna pull this off? Why is this happening to me? This isn't fair. There's no way I can do this. I wouldn't know how to do this. WTF, essentially. And along the way, I've learned some things. And I've been able to continue having a business, serving clients all over the world while homeschooling, not just that one child, but three kids. Um, until about a week ago, I was homeschooling two kids. Uh, my youngest daughter was finishing up her early childhood program at a wonderful Waldorf school, but it's not a surprise to you all to hear that she has now been thrown into the homeschooling mix and we're all finding our way. So we're going to find our way together. And um, great, I see some people here on Facebook. Great to see you, Laura Hudson. All right, and so I want to make this interactive. I want to make sure I answer your questions. And just my intention from us gathering here together is to alleviate um, any overwhelm that you're feeling, any anxiety that you're feeling. And we're, I'd like to start us off by simply leading you through a breathing technique 
just coming into this place of our breath, okay? Um, if you feel good about closing your eyes, I'll invite you to close your eyes. And if you prefer to keep them with a soft gaze looking at something in front of you that's not moving, that's okay too. This is your time. I commend you for being here and it's going to pay off in huge, huge ways. So bringing your awareness inward, tuning in. I know we're connecting virtually through a video screen. Some of you might be calling in. We've given you lots of different options to get here because my team and I were committed to helping you navigate this road. So coming inward, focusing on your breath, focusing on your healthy body, your healthy lungs, your healthy heart, your healthy soul, and your healthy family. Just bringing that focus to the breath. When you start feeling anxious in these interesting weeks that we're all experiencing, can you come inside? Can you close your eyes? You can simply say a mantra, I am breathing in, I am breathing out, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. It could be helpful to put your hands on your heart. To really feel that beating heart. To not allow yourself to be pulled under by the intense forces at play right now. As parents, as leaders, it is our job to show up as calm. and collect it as we can, while still giving yourself permission to feel your feelings and be human. As you focus on your breath, I'm going to remind you of something right now. Your child chose you for a reason. If you have multiple children, those children chose you for a reason. You are and always have been their greatest teacher. And I know and you know that they are your greatest teacher. And together we are engaged in this dance of teaching and learning and teaching and learning and loving and figuring it all out as we go and homeschooling is this sacred container to do just this. And so from this place of stillness, from this place of groundedness, from this place of wisdom and remembrance of that truth that you are their greatest teacher, Come into that place of confidence and joy and excitement of what you will do together, what you will experience together now that you have a new sense of freedom and flexibility that perhaps got a bit lost. And while some of this newness might be very uncomfortable. I am holding that space for you to realize that this can be a great gift. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Beautiful. And coming back to this place, slowly opening your eyes to this experience in this moment. I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're here. I'm not sure those of you on Zoom, if you, I don't see any, any comments in the chat. So if for some reason that's not working, maybe that's what's going on. You can always check out the video. It's on my Facebook, um, my personal page. And so you can always put stuff in there. For some reason, things can't come across on, on Zoom. I know that Zoom is having higher than normal um, traffic these days. Zoom is a video platform that I've been using in my business for several years. And I'm so grateful for Zoom. And right now, 
because uh, learning has just moved online for a lot of schools and colleges. There are a lot more people using Zoom than normal. <laughs> In fact, I just showed my kid's piano teacher um, this week how to use Zoom and suggested she sign up for an account <laughs> and was giving her a tutorial on how to use it. And um, they had their first lesson yesterday. It went really well. This morning, I showed my son's geometry teacher, who also um, works with him on science. They'll be moving into botany um, in a few weeks how to use Zoom, and he, in fact, used my Zoom account this morning because I wasn't using it for clients. So um, shout out to Zoom. I know they are working, you know, quadruple time to service all of the people and uh, educational institutions and businesses who are now connecting virtually, okay? So yes, yes, yes. Um, and Amy, yes, it's so great to see you here. Amy Ehlers, I'm just checking in on some of your comments. I really like to make our conversations interactive. So your kids shows you for a reason you're their greatest teacher and they're your greatest teacher homeschooling as a sacred container. Absolutely. So listen, where do you begin? Where do you begin? <laughs> well, let us let us begin there after that, that juicy, beautiful meditation. Um, and I want to, there's my phone. I've invited my husband, we'll see if he remembers, to come in at some point and say hello to you because what I want to say come in when you can I'm just texting him now um, Stephen and I both work from home my husband's name is Stephen and we share the homeschooling responsibilities in our family okay and I want to let you all know I know we've I serve women in my business and so I know we've got a bunch of moms here um, moms it is not just your responsibility to educate your children um, and to create a very powerful learning environment. You know, whether you are partnered to a man or a woman, whatever your situation is, or whether you're a single parent, um, and maybe the, you know, the other parent in your child's life is, is present or not, get people to support you around this. It doesn't just have to land on your shoulders. That is an old paradigm. And in fact, that's very much what um, a lot of what you see in the homeschooling arena. When I got here unexpectedly, abruptly, when my now fifth grade son was one month into second grade, and he basically just would not go into his classroom one day, there was like a traumatic experience that happened. Long story, if you want to go in deeper into that story, you can listen to a podcast episode that I created a few months back. I'll give you a link to it later so you can kind of understand more of my story around this. But essentially, he wouldn't go into his classroom one day. He would not go back into his classroom the next day or the next day or the next day or the next day. And he wouldn't go to another school, even though we tried, you know, touring these schools. He was very clear. I want to be homeschooled. And in fact, I will only be homeschooled. And um, that was freaking terrifying. But what helped me so much was that Stephen and I joined forces once we got through our initial shock and um, we realized, like, this is what our child needs. And y'all, this is what your kids need. This is what your kids need right now. There really is no other solution because of what's happening in the world with this virus, with this you know huge healthcare um, situation that is really bringing a halt to all of the systems that we're used to, okay? And so what helped us so much at that time was us realizing that we were gonna do this together. And Stephen and I both worked from home at that time. We still work at home. I have my own business. He works in sports um, television. And we created a schedule that um, would allow each of us to kind of split our days, if you will, and be kind of responsible for overseeing the kids for like a half day, let's say, while the other person works, and then we'd flip flop. All right. And this is what has served us very well. Um, but I will say, when I first got started, most of who I would see doing this where mom's doing it while, let's, I'll just be real with you, while the husband's worked, okay? And while the husband's typically worked outside of the home, okay? That's kind of a very common way it's designed. There's nothing wrong with that design, but that has never been my design, okay? And so I'm going to speak to you from the way it's been for me, because that's the world I've been living in. Um, you can always look for other examples that better reflect your situation to get some support and guidance around that. But I will say that where we began was simply 
giving ourselves space and grace to clear the decks, okay? For some of you, you can engage in what's called like an almost a, it's not even unschooling, it's like a de-schooling, okay? Some of you have kids where the school environment wasn't even that great for them. It was unhealthy, maybe even a toxic situation due to whatever. And um, you might want to engage right now just really clearing the decks and just doing stuff together. This is not about you all of a sudden having like a PhD in whatever subject material you feel like you need to be like an expert to the nth degree on. This is about you being with your child, okay? And I wish I would have like really grasped that more so at the beginning. I've learned that as I've traveled this path and several People have supported me. I've read, you know, lots of books, and I am going to give you all a resource guide. Um, looks like this. I'll, I'll walk you through that uh, once this this training is over, because I want to make sure that you walk away with something and you just feel like, okay, you've got some next steps that you can explore. But I want you to know that this is not, and freaking write this down if you need to, because once I got this, it was like I exhaled. Um, this is not replicating school at home. You will never replicate school at home. Homeschooling really should be renamed like home, home learning, <laughs> you know, just learning in the world. And it's right now it's very much home because of what's happening in the world. A lot of us quarantined, um, social distancing in normal times, learning is happening everywhere, not just quote at home. Right now, homeschooling is kind of earning that, that label. But in regular times, it's not like that. Learning is taking place everywhere. So what I would suggest for you all is to know that you are not replicating school at home. If you try to do that, you're going to freak out. You are going to feel like a failure. You are going to try to compare yourself to an institution that you are not. You are not that. And you don't need to be that. That is not what your child needs. Okay, it's just not. And I think that's why so many people flip out when it comes to homeschooling. They're like, I'm not set up for that. I'm not, you know, I didn't get a master's degree in teaching and this and that. It's okay. It is okay. All right. So when it comes to what a typical day looks like, well, you get to design it. You get to design it. Some of you are very, uh, you need that structure, all right? Like that's the way you roll. That is what's going to give you peace. That is what's going to allow you to really, you know, um, navigate this with some sense of like groundedness. But for others of you, you don't need that. Um, in quote, normal times, I have a bit more of a structured day because we have tutors who come and support our family. I am a businesswoman. My husband also has his career. And I took the pressure off of myself to try to be everything and all the things to my children, all right? That is not required. You don't have to have tutors. There's a lot of other resources that you can draw from, and I'm gonna give you some ideas around this. But that is something that we did in our family because it just felt right. And we have wonderful um, people in our local community who provide tutoring to homeschooled kids in particular. And so when we started on this path, I had some friends who were already doing this and they gave me some suggestions and hooked me up with their tutors. And, you know, we've been working with them over a period of time. So when I would look at my days, I would, you know, it's basically creating like a, for those of you who went to college, like a college schedule where you're like, okay. Um, we're going to have this class here. We're going to have that class there. And if you can also remember from college, one of my favorite things about college, did I have class from nine in the morning until three in the afternoon straight? No, I did not. I had class Monday, Wednesday, Friday from this time to this time. Come on in, Steve. And um, that's what you can do with, with your scheduling as well. You get to decide. You get to decide. Okay. So, hi, Steve. Hi. <laughs> Let's see if this works, if you put this in here. We'll ask the people. Talk, Steve. 
Hi. 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 Can you all hear both of us right now? I've never tried to do AirPods one in one ear and one in the other, but I want to know if if you all can hear okay. Um, I'm seeing the chat on Facebook, so if you all can just say like, yes, I can hear you okay, that would be good. Um, and then we can continue on. If not, we'll turn the AirPods off. Can you hear Steven and I? Okay. Keep talking, Steve, and we'll okay. see what they yeah. have yeah. to Everybody say. Switch pod to other side. Oh, well, you can't because it's in that ear. You know what? We'll just turn off the AirPods while we're doing this tandem session. How about that? Okay. Uh, come and say hi, everyone. The whole family wants to join in. All right. Okay. So they want, well, we're not going to stay in here, but just come and wave. Come and wave, guys. Yeah, this wave. is our crew. I know you all get it because your crew's all home. This is Kate. Hi. Here's Sean who got us on this road. And there's Luke who was like, I want to get on this road too. And Kate said, me too. Boom. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks. So, so, Steve, I was just telling them yeah. that um, you, a tip. Yeah, go ahead, guys. We'll see you in a bit. How in normal times, like we have, you know, tutors who come in, we split our schedule um, to support the kids. Yeah. And what I wanted to kind of just check in with Steve, and I'm glad you all can hear us okay without the AirPods. Um, what were some of those? Because these are a lot of people who are just thrown into the mix, like kind of abruptly, like we were when Sean really laid this on us. Um, just some initial, like, just some tips for those who are kind of like, OMG. <laughs> um, I thought when, when, when this first happened and, and Sean, you know, we had his homeschool, Sean, I really thought we weren't, you know, there was no way we were going to be able to, to do this, to homeschool. It was like, this isn't something I've never contemplated in my life. And I have no idea how to, never thought about being a teacher, never studied, never didn't know anything about how to, how to homeschool or what homeschool even was. And, and the only people I knew who homeschooled when I was younger were, they were for religious reasons and, and it was only few and far between. Um, but then, you know, just reading some books about, about homeschooling and, and uh, maybe um, almost the advantages of homeschooling. I took a different, you know, it really kind of brought me around to a different perspective and a different view on it. And then just knowing that, um, you know, there's so many resources out there for you to homeschool. Like there's, there's, a, you can teach uh, so many different styles. You know, you can do a, a Waldorf style, which is how we started. You can do it online. You can do it um, you know, there's just, there's just so much material out there and there's so many resources that, um, you can really make it work. You don't have to have any experience teaching and, um, uh, the tools are there for you and, and really you don't even have to do, you know, we, we have never done traditional homeschooling. Um, and that's been fine. You know, we've, we've done, we've done it our own way. You know, Jenny sort of led the way, but we, we really, you know, um, uh, you know, developed our own, built our own trail um, in terms of how we homeschool, but it's, it's really, we really feel like it's worked out great. And, um, you know, we, we know, it, you know, even when everything gets back to normal, I mean, we'll continue to homeschool because we really, it's something we really believe in and, and enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one of the books, I think, and I put it on your list, but I wanted Stephen to speak to it. And then I know he's got to hop onto a call now for his work. Um, we both read what I read this one. Did you read both by John? Yeah. Chiragata? Yeah. So I put this on your resource list. Um, again, some of you will be here for as long as you need to be here and then you'll navigate back into the way quote it was others. You will decide to stay here. Um, something that Steven and I, there's a, uh, John Taylor Gatto. You'll see his books listed on the resource guide. We both read, you read both of I think he has, he may have more than two books, but his two books that we have in our house are one is called Dumbing Us Down and the other one is called Weapons of Mass Instruction. Okay. Now he has a very unique position. Uh, don't read those books if you have every uh, <laughs> inclination to like 
have your kids go back to regular school when it's in session because you might not want to afterwards. Um, he was a New York City school teacher. He was like teacher of the year. And I think, you know, for Stephen, he was much more hesitant to get on the homeschooling train when Sean went through this period where, I mean, he literally would not go to school, you guys. Like he had what's called school refusal, okay? It's a technical term called school refusal. And once Steve and I like really just had to see it for what it is and surrender as parents, we got educated. And um, what did like what were some of your takeaways just from the reading that you did of his? John Taylor Gatto. Yeah. Just I mean, he's he was. Um, I, I mean, I think in the nineteen uh, late nineteen nineties, he was voted New York City Teacher of the Year. And as he evolved, he became you know, a, a critic of the school system and how it's, it's not the best way for children to learn. It's in fact, you know, it, that the traditional approach to education is wrong. And he took a, a very contrarian view to, to what he had done for most of his life. And I just think he makes, his books make, made a lot of sense. And again, it's not something um, that, everybody can do I, you know homeschooling isn't something that's feasible for everybody but if you can do it it's i think after reading those books um i really felt much uh you know i just felt like we were absolutely making the right decision and they're not they're not um homeschool um they're not going to teach you how to homeschool it just makes the case for homeschool and there was another book that um, again, it doesn't have to really do with homeschooling, but since you're in mm, the homeschooling, homeschool hold on to your child, which mm -hmm. I think was really it's called hold on to your me. kids. Hold on to your kids. Yeah, maybe. I'll add that to the list, guys, and we'll get that. We'll Very this profound. With you. Hold yeah. on to your kids. Yeah, we'll add that. I know I never read that one to be frank, but he did, and a lot of our friends did, and he was really impacted by it. So, thank you, Stephen. Okay. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Good luck. Yay for All Steven. Right. All Bye. right. Have a good time on okay. your call. All right. Well, that was fun. It's always fun to co-present. Okay. I'm going to put these back, back in my ears and we'll carry on. And I Write to me, guys. Like, don't leave me hanging. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's carry on. Uh, yeah. And so again, there is a strong case for homeschooling. I, cause, and I want to just make that point so that you're not going like, oh my God, like now my kids are, they're going to kind of miss out on the rest of whatever grade they're in and all their learning stops and oh crap, like no. Honestly, I want y'all to celebrate. I want y'all to celebrate. I want y'all to take a giant exhale. I want y'all to embrace the magic of not having to get everyone out of the house at a certain time every morning, right? You want to sleep later? Sleep later. You want to stay in your pajamas for, you know, until lunchtime? You can do that too. Again, you got to figure out the way that you roll because they're taking cues from you. Your kids are taking cues from you. And that is, you know, leads us back into that point I was, you know, talking about before Steve came in, which is that typical day. You get to design it the way that you want to, but leave space in there for magic. When I got into like frustration around it and being like, that's it. I'm calling up the local school, like, they'll find a spot for you today, you know, because, listen, this can be very frustrating, too, and you're going to have those moments, and I want you all to feel your feelings and not try to be, like, perfect teacher person, <laughs> because, no, 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 we're going to be real. When it became fun, er, <laughs> was when I said, you know what, it is a beautiful day, like, why don't you go out and play? I know we normally do this, but, like, you know what, just go. It's fine. Go out and freaking get some energy out. That is the magic of this time. You are not going to get in trouble if your child or children are not sitting at a table at this particular time. No one's coming to get you in trouble. Like that's not happening. And there's almost like this deconstruction that needs to happen. Again, when I talked about kind of like the de-schooling where you're like, someone's looking over your shoulder. Now, some of you, you know, you have certain situations with your school districts and what have you, where they might be doing online school and they're giving you assignments and you've got to submit and whatever. Like, that's your deal. You, you've got to navigate that road in the way that you are. But I will tell you where I live in Massachusetts, in Berkshire County, um, I submit my vision at the beginning of the year for each child. And then I submit a report at the end of the year. 
and that's all I do. It is very hands off and I love that freedom. Um, we have a very robust plan that we'll submit at the beginning of the year because we really do take this seriously. But we also know that the, the learning is happening all the time. When your kids are going to the grocery store, the learning's happening. When they're baking, the learning is happening. When they're outside playing, the learning is happening. When they are engaged in some kind of project, putting something together, like my dad is going to send my sons like one of those Lego architecture kits because they love that. That counts. Like that is learning. Learning does not have to be doing like 17 worksheets or um, being online for eight hours. I would suggest that that is not a healthy approach to this for most children. Uh, my kids are 11, 8, and 5. Um, my 8 and 5 year olds are having birthdays in April, so they're almost up you know, to that next level. But we do very little when it comes to online in my world. Um, again, you can navigate this yourself, but I don't want you to think that they have to be online for like the entire day for that to count as like education, even though maybe a lot of schools are moving into that environment, okay? For those of you who are choosing this as perhaps a new normal and you're going to you know, stay on this road, you're going to have a lot of you know, flexibility to design this in the way that's best for your child and for your family. And I think there is such beauty in this. And this, for many of you, is reclaiming your power. Reclaiming your power and reclaiming your sovereignty, to be clear, okay? And that might feel a little unsettling right now because when we're so used to having a system take care of things for us and the system is no longer operating in the way that it typically does, whoa, there is um, uh, a grieving that, that might be taking place for, for some of you. And if that's where you are, it's totally normal. And it's just part of the process. So I want you all to just figure out what feels good. Maybe you have a theme to each day. Maybe you know you want to have certain topics that um, you're going to hit or certain things that they're going to do. I will be sharing on this giant resource page a link to the, this game plan that I made for each of my kids. Now that we're in this, again, new normal situation, um, I made a, a chart that will print out a fresh chart each week. And it essentially has a list of the things that they could be doing most days. Not all the days, they don't need to be doing like these, you know, kind of classic academic type things on weekends, although maybe they will. You know, it's again, you all get to decide, but what I did was to create these charts and we've been having a blast. Like they're so excited, like, oh, I get my check mark, my daughter, um, who's kind of newly into this homeschool thing now. She is loving the checks. She's like, I get my check. I, I, I set the table. I'm like, okay, let's get you your check mark. So kids, they want to be engaged in this process with you. And your job really is to, is to bring some kind of order to it, some sort of organization that feels good. And you'll try stuff on and you'll see what works. And if something doesn't work, you can always change it. You are allowed to change it. Okay. So, in, in our family, what we've done that has worked well is that we've decided, you know, which subjects we wanted to really give a lot of energy to, um, depending on where that our, our particular child is in their development or what age they are. Um, we've given a big focus through the years on math, on, you know, English and reading and writing, on they've had French lessons. This is a, I think they've had... I think they started at last school year, and now we're still in that um, piano, you know, music, uh, physical education is just huge because they play a ton of sports. And I'm thinking that those are some of the top areas that we've really looked to get support around. When it's normal times, our local um, library has homeschool classes. I live in a small town and I have been amazed at the amount of support that our local community offers for homeschoolers. My area is pretty progressive. There's a lot of like very kind of earthy, creative, intellectual people here. And that's a lot of what you'll find in the homeschooling world. Um, it's, they're very interesting people. 
um, often highly educated, and they've just realized that this this dynamic, this road is much healthier and um, supportive of their child and their child being uniquely who they are and of their family structure, okay? Um, good question, Amanda Steinberg says, do your kids ever feel lonely? No, I mean, right now they kind of are because they can't see all their friends that they normally do, um, but in regular times, no. We play a ton of sports. Um, they have a lot of friends. Some of those friends they met in those first few years of being at, our kids went through a Waldorf early childhood, and then my oldest son made it until the first month of second grade in Waldorf. So that's where those initial friendships were formed. And the ones that are, you know, strong and have made it through continue on. Uh, they've made more friends through sports. And they meet friends in these homeschool classes that they, that they go to in regular times. Um, so look at your community if, you know, as we move through this, this crisis together, if you stay in this realm because you realize, wow, I really like it and my kid is thriving, then look around because there will be resources in your local community. There might be online resources that you look to as well. You'll see some of those that I've listed. One that you can look at, Khan Academy. Um, they are an online resource. You don't have to be homeschooled to use Khan Academy. It's free. They accept donations. And it's wonderful instruction around math, around um, lots of different subjects. We use it for math. We had a tutor up to a certain point for math. And then I found that my kids were getting like really edgy around math. They're like, we don't like math. It's boring. You know, it's a lot of like doing problems in a book. And we wanted to make it a bit more dynamic for a while to see how that would work. So we've switched to Khan Academy over the last few months and just playing with that. And then just knowing that they're getting math instruction in lots of different ways. Um, again, my oldest son, he is now in fifth, so his tutor, um, who used to do like, you know, straight up math with him and science, this year in the Waldorf tradition, they do a lot of geometry. So he's working with him on geometry, they're doing online classes now, and in the next few weeks, they'll switch back to botany. So we do follow a particular curriculum loosely. You do not have to, it's not required. Um, because we have that Waldorf start, to our kids' education, we've chosen to use a Waldorf curriculum for a bit of a container, but we don't follow it, you know, 100%. It's just you can pull from things. Again, you're not going to get in trouble. No one's saying you have to do it 100% and, you know, every single day like that. It's just not how this works. You're in a whole nother ball game now. Welcome to the game. It's a good game. I'm really happy that you're here. and. Um, you know, I'm here to support you around questions you have around this. What did I want to say about, um, you know, some of these materials? So I wanted to show, and you'll see this on your chart too, for some of you are like, I just need some like things to have in my home to like give to the children. Look for Khan Academy. Um, Royal Fireworks Press, which I have listed on here, they are a great publisher of educational materials for children. And um, there is an author that they, an author and a teacher, Michael Clay Thompson. Okay, you can write down his name, Michael Clay Thompson. We have purchased like pretty much his entire grammar series. And this is for my son who is in third grade, okay? Um, this is called Poodle Knows What. And it's really just the basics of grammar, okay? Teaching him nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs down the line. So I have the teacher's manual. That's me. I'm the teacher. I um, initially was an English major in college, I will say. And my first idea of what I was going to do with my life was to be a high school English teacher. So life is funny, isn't it? <laughs> and um, this is the book that he would work from. So we read a lot of stories together. And then there's, you know, some examples. And then there'll be a place where he would do the assignment. So what I do is just make a copy. I have a great printer and copier in my office because I have a business and I'm you know, fully set up for what I need to do. So I'll make a copy of that and we'll do it together because my daughter will also use these books when she is at that point. Um, he's got a huge series. So when you go to the Royal Fireworks Press page, which I will give you on this resource guide, you can just see everything that they have. Okay, and there's a lot. And they also offer online classes, which we have not done as of yet but they're there for you and if you feel like your child needs that and you want to try it you can 
we use this for French, French and English words. Okay, we just got this for like we celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah in our house, so it was like a mixed gift. <laughs> and their French teacher will often just say like, okay, which you know what, um, I'm gonna do this with them for a bit because their their French teacher, a lot of their teachers were willing to kind of go on and do virtual classes. Their French teacher is just not in his realm of comfort, and so we're gonna kind of push pause on that. But what he would do is just have them, you know, choose a certain number of words and memorize them and, you know, talk about them the next class and do other things with them too, because I'm not a fluid French speaker at all. But this is a great thing. And you can look up the um, pronunciations of words very easily now when you just type in, you know, how do you say whatever in French? And you'll hear someone saying it, you know, it's incredible. You just go to Google and type that in. And of course, there's, you know, special foreign language learning programs out there that you can, uh, that you can use as well, you know, and you can hire tutors. There's, let me tell y'all, there's a lot of people right now looking for some, some virtual work, a lot. Okay, um, this is a great thing to have two children's dictionaries. Just a wonderful, you know, uh, like, you know, why don't you just go read the dictionary for a while, just go sit and read the dictionary. Right, where it's just really um, a lot of illustrations. This is made by Scholastic. We just have this as part of our library. I just wanted to show you some of these to give you some ideas. Um, this is also a great book we got them for Christmas Hanukkah. Smithsonian publishes this, Timelines of Everything. You know, again, if you're gonna be kind of setting things up, because what I love about this too, it takes them offline. It takes them offline. I'm a big believer in that. You know, our kids definitely go online for certain things and see digital stuff for certain things. But I think it's really, especially in this time where a lot of people are not calm, there's a lot of anxiety. When you look through a book, it's different than when you're looking online, you're getting pulled into this and pulled into that. How can you bring in some of these beautiful elements to just bring a sense of exploration and curiosity and wonder into your kids' lives? Okay, and this has been a book that my um, fifth grader has used for math. It's called Saxon Math. Okay, Saxon Math. So you can look at that. Okay, and then, and it's for, it's like homeschool. And he did, basically there were just lessons and he would go through and do, and do the lessons. Okay, and then um, there's a, there's some other uh, resources that I have on your that have on your list where you can just go through and get some get some ideas for maybe some materials that you want to order bring into your home okay uh, let's see what else a book for those of you who are you're a little bit like okay I think I might want to do this longer term and I I want some more guidance an awesome book you'll see it on the list. Because I know that your time is valuable too, and you don't have all day every day to just sit and read while your kids run wild. Um, the Call of the Wild. Speaking of wild, The Call of the Wild by Ainsley Arment. By Ainsley Arment. That was published this past September. I wish it was available when I first started because, again, I read that and I was like, oh, so much of what you all can do. Like I said, just be with your kids. One of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite things to do. And I, t I tell my kids, I'm like, you know, and I just remembered it recently when all of this kind of went down. My favorite thing to do with them is to pick a book and read it out loud to them. That is, we spent, I want to say it was when Luke was in first and Sean was in third. We essentially spent that entire school year. I mean, in addition to the other things that we were doing, but that entire school year, I want to say we did it pretty much in the school year. It might have started when Sean was in second and Luke was still in kindergarten. We read the entire Little House on the Prairie series by Laura Ingalls Wilder. That will be an experience I will never forget for my entire life. I loved every moment of it. And we would just, you know, during those cold winter days, we actually were reading the book, The Long Winter. And we would sit in our in front of our fireplace and just be cozy and they would just listen. And I was saying to a friend recently, it's like me playing a magic flute when I just read out loud. If you haven't done that with your child in a while, do it. Do it. I don't care how old they are. And they might say, I don't want to listen. This is stupid. They will. 
that is your magic flute. That is your magic flute. It is so freaking good. And um, the book that I just read recently with them that I'll suggest to you all something to check out was The Call of the Wild by Jack London. I had never read that in my life. Oh my gosh, incredible. And I was inspired because I wanted to take them to see the new movie with Harrison Ford. Um, I'm hoping that the studio will release it digitally because I'm not going to the movie theater anytime soon, unfortunately. Uh, and so that I saw that was coming out. I was like, you know what? That would be a great thing for us to do. Read that book together and then go see the film and compare and contrast the film and the book. And, you know, look for themes and trends and, and have them really just absorb this, this story. And um, it was so fabulous. The book we're reading now, we just started it yesterday, is The Yearling by Marjorie Keenan Rawlings. Okay, so when you read together, they're learning language, they're learning, you know, um, scene, they might be learning history, they're learning to stay focused on a story that they're not seeing with their eyes, they are seeing the picture in their own brain, seeing the picture in their own imagination as, as it comes to life. I know a lot of people use um, audiobooks, you know, they'll listen to that while they do other things. In fact, that's an area I'm going to get more into that has not been an area that I have really used so much, but I can see how it would be really awesome to do so. Uh, but it was, I think yesterday I was yet reading the yearling and Sean wanted to finish his geometry assignment because he had his class today. I said, why don't you go get your, your notebook and you can, you can draw your thing while you're listening to the story. And it worked really well. So just be creative about how you bring this to life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's see. Aubrey has a question, not homeschooling specific. My daughter who is eight is doing virtual play dates with friends by video chat. Yeah. For those of you who, exactly. We have a Peloton and you can video chat on the Peloton. My kids are doing that with one of their friends. You, you all are creative and, and innovation happens in times of crisis in particular. And so I know you all are going to be super creative and innovative during this time. Okay. Um, for those of you who are like, how do you homeschool multiple children? Well, I will say you just find your way with it. There's times when it looks, it looks kind of messy. Uh, but this morning, let's, for instance, Sean was working with his, uh, geometry tutor and I got them set up actually on my zoom and he was downstairs. We have a whole section of the house dedicated to kind of homeschooling. We have a, you know, a shelf and we have a table and chairs and, you don't have to have that. It can be on your living room floor, okay? Wherever it works, okay? Because again, this is learning happening everywhere, learning happening by being together. And what you're showing your child is how to just trust themselves. You're showing them how to trust themselves by you trusting yourself. And you showing them that learning can be really fun and they're not in competition with anyone. They're not being stacked up against this person being like, well, you obviously are the smarter one because you got the higher score. Like, that's not how this works. It's a totally different situation. And I think it's going to provide you and your kid um, a new way of relating to learning and to giving them space to explore a topic without feeling like, oh, it's got to be cut off now because we got to move on to the next thing. It's, it gives you a lot more spaciousness. Okay. But so Sean was downstairs with his um, tutor and Typically, when my daughter goes to her early childhood class on Wednesdays, they have bread day. And I'm doing my best to keep some sort of semblance of, you know, normalcy, because I know for her, you know, life just got really different really fast. So we said, let's bake some muffins. I, I got the, um, uh, I got, and I'm not like a from scratch kind of person, just so you know, I bought a mix when I was at the store the other day really good almond flour, like pumpkin muffin mix. I'm like, great, that's, I'll use that for bread day. And um, together we, you know, my son was cracking eggs. My daughter was pouring in the mix. They were taking turns stirring. Then, um, you know, one was holding the a measuring cup to then have the other one pour the olive oil in. And then together they were pouring it into the, uh, the cups. That's learning, that's learning, that's measurement. That is le learning how, you know, cooking happens and timing. All of this counts. All of this counts. 
Um, to be honest, I'm going to be emailing you all the link to this. So make sure if you have the link to be here, then you'll get the email. Okay. And I'll give you the link to this resource guide. I'm going to add a couple things on there that kind of came up during this conversation. Congratulations. You're a single mom and you can do this. You can do this. You all, you've got to get creative, get support, but just know that there are ways to pull this off. There are ways to pull this off. And I think that has been one of my greatest lessons that like, as my husband said, when he came in, your first, and well, my first instinct was, there's no way I can pull this off or he can pull this off or we can pull this off. I don't know what my son was thinking, but he picked the wrong parents if he thought that we could do this because neither one of us was a stay at home parent. Um, I personally, I give a huge shout out to stay at home moms. I never could have been that. Um, or I didn't think I could, I guess if I was in that situation, I would have figured it out. You know? <laughs> Cause I never thought I could be a homeschool parent either. Uh, but here I am. And so you, you find your way and honestly, you, you boost up your confidence and you develop this relationship with your child. That is so beautiful. Not that it wasn't beautiful before, but it's a different kind. It's a different way. And I'm really excited for you all. I really do. Great question, Allie, over here on Zoom. How do you balance work deadlines with hands-on time with kids? Great question. Okay. So, and that was one of my points I wanted to make sure I hit. Well, I am, I am organized. I am organized. Now, I might have, you know, more of kind of a free flow um, way with the children because I let them really follow their interests. You know, when they have sessions with tutors or when we have certain classes that are taking place, Obviously, they need to be there at those specific times. That's like kind of when you were, for those of you who went to college, and you're like, hey, time to go to your English class. It's time to go to your whatever class. You had to be there. Like, that was class. But the in-between times is when you were studying, you were exploring, you might have been socializing, you were exercising. That's honestly what homeschool is. And you're helping your child find the freedom and the focus and the discipline within this approach, okay? And so when I'm with the kids, I'm very much like, all right, like, you're going to be doing this, Luke. I'm going to be doing some grammar work with you. Kate, why don't you color? Um, Sean, you're going to be doing your blah, blah. You have that assignment due for whatever. And so I'm very much like a director, if you will. You're here, you're here, you're here. Okay, y'all, in 20 minutes, we're going to kind of come together. Let's read. Once I shift into my work, then, you know, Stephen and I flip-flop. If you're not in that situation, you will figure out how to design it in the way that is relevant for you, that is real for you. Um, so what I do is I just know, okay, I have client calls from these times to these times. If I have something due, I might need to get up extra early one morning and just say to the kids, like, mom is working until 8 a.m. this morning. Like, get your breakfast. <laughs> I've taught them, like, my kids are really good at making, Sean makes some freaking mean scrambled eggs. They are, it's like his specialty, scrambled eggs, and he makes these egg sandwiches now, and they're really masters at making grilled cheeses. Him and Luke, they've got that thing mastered, okay? And uh, we'll get Kate on her way when, when the time is right. They know how to find snacks. Like, we've got all the snack doors. But I'm very clear, like, mom's got this thing that we need to get done for work. You all go do your thing. I'll see you in a bit, okay? And then I shift. Um, I might need to, you know, stay in my office. Like, I, this needs to get done for tomorrow. I also, Ally, to your question around work deadlines, I have a team. I have a team. All my team, they work from home. We all work from home. Um, they're all part-time contractors. They don't service me exclusively. They have other clients. But I will tell you that I am so freaking grateful for my team always. But right now, extra. And by me being in business and giving them work, I'm supporting other women. And because all my team, they're all women. Um, supporting them and supporting their families. And I have a business that supports my family and supports my clients all over the world. So I am just very much like what needs to happen. My priority is on my clients and my money generating activities. And we need to be looking at that. I know a lot of you here are, you know, entrepreneurs, work from home moms like me. And this is not the time to be like, well, you know, I can't, I guess I can't work or I can't sell anything. I will st still be selling things. Um, I'm going to be proud to be doing that because, again, the more that I do that, the more I can continue investing in my team, the more that, you know, we invest in our tutors, moving into online classes. You know, we have a sitter who 
usually is in our house supporting us uh, a few days a week. That helps. We had her for like two different days a week. We're paying her now, even though she's not here. And so I do this because I'm really serious about my business. And one of the things I was actually talking to um, one of my cousins, and she's like, I don't, how do you even homeschool? I said, you know, one of the biggest reasons, let me be real with you, is I've eliminated toxicity and bullshit from my life. I've eliminated toxicity and bullshit from my life. I don't have the space or the interest to deal with things that just um, are, and this is kind of a weird thing to say during this time, but I'm very discerning about what I work on and whom I work with and where my energy goes because I don't have the full day to work. I'm with my children for a portion of that day. And I think for many of you, you're realizing this now because of this new normal. And my hope for you and my um, almost like a call to arms is to use this, whether you stay in this homeschooling ground longer or it's just for this period of time, that you use this to become a real oh, master of your time and a master of your energy. And you doing that and showing your children how that's done, that's the greatest gift you can give them. That is the greatest gift you can give them. Okay. It's just so good. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, and let me know if you have a follow-up question on that, Ali. Uh, Theana says, yeah, all state tests still required for homeschooling. Oh, are state tests still required for homeschooling? I have a fundamental issue with those types of tests. Not in my state or in my county up to this point. You know, my son, again, is in fifth. I have a friend whose son, um, he was homeschooled through, I want to say through ninth. They thought he'd be homeschooled the whole way. They're very into education. Um, he wants to go to an Ivy League school. And he eventually decided he wanted to go to a, a prep school, a boarding school. And he entered in 10th grade. And um, what he was taking at that point were, I think, just like subject matter SAT tests. You know, whatever was kind of required for certain higher levels of learning. But to my experience so far, no, none of that none of that it's been it's very much like and again it's state by state um district by district you know i'm in county by county it's district by district what i do at the beginning of the year they said submission of our vision for the year for each child and then an end of year report i take a lot of photos i'm a great writer i'm a great chronicler i just submit to the principal of our local public school and um that's what i do <laughs> That's what I do. And um, it's been it's been beautiful. You know, they've written back like, well done. Congratulations. Like they've been really, really supportive. But it does vary by by district. And so for those of you who are going to stay on this road, even after the situation passes, and it will y'all like this too shall pass. It's just a matter of time. You can explore those legalities with your local district okay and you will get the details in that way okay um what other questions do you all have i want to open let's see oh there's a great hi kate <laughs> kate just came back into my office uh there is a great uh another resource on here you'll see it's a link to an article and it's from a site called children's md there's kate and it's called 18 Reasons Why, no ma'am, doctors and lawyers homeschool their children. 18 Reasons Why Doctors and Lawyers Homeschool Their Children. Okay, uh, again, for those of you who are in a bit of like, oh my gosh, is this real? Can I really do this? Is this allowed? Um, is this safe? <laughs> that article honestly was the one that when this all was happening with my oldest son, and Stephen and I were like, what are we going to do? Like, we got to get him back into school. That is normal. That is what normal people do. They go to school. Why will he not go to school? And we just had to surrender. I mean, really. And uh, his, my mother-in-law sent us a link to that article. And we printed it out. And we sat on our bed. And we read it together. We took turns reading the reasons. And at, like two thirds of the way through the article, I was like, I started crying. And I'm like, oh my God, this is what we're supposed to do. This is good. This is healthy. And it's totally possible. 
and we can do this. And this is what is being asked of us. And we're going to respond as his parents. We're going to do this. We're going to figure it out. And that's what I know for you all. You're going to figure it out. Absolutely. Okay. Ask me more questions. What else do you need help with? On this sheet, you're going to see just some more data and facts and trends about homeschool. I'm going to give you a few podcasts that you can listen to around homeschooling. Um, there's a link to my initial podcast episode on here. There's a, a site where you can buy supplies. Again, I'm coming from a Waldorf background because just the way we got going. And there's a great website where we get like craft supplies and, and certain books. Um, crafting is one of my favorite things to do, making things with them, just really using our hands and being together. Deanna says, what's the method Waldorf uses? It's very much about creativity, imagination, working with your hands. It's super low tech, super low tech, like ultra. <laughs> so that might not work for you all, but you all have full permission to kind of pick and choose. The thing with the call of the wild by Ainsley Arment, and she's really an expert in this whole homeschooling round, she'll give you the lay of the land with various options and describing what those options are. So again, for those of you who are like, I'm freaking doing this and I've been waiting for this opportunity and here I am, go get that book and read it because it will paint some pictures of how you can do this. I, she has either four or five children. I can't remember the exact number. And she has a whole community for people who are homeschooling. Um, so, or, or women who are, it's most, it's for moms. I think it's moms exclusively. All they do certain things for families, but she basically gives you full permission to just make, make your own way, make your own way. Again, I wish that book would have been out when I first got started because I was, I was trying to make school at home and it was super hard and I was in over my head. And I was also thinking I needed to kind of hide this from my clients and community because I thought they wouldn't take me seriously as a business owner. And in fact, I have people now who join my programs and hire me specifically because I homeschool and they do this or they want to do this. And others who are like, I don't want to homeschool, but I still want to work with you as my coach because I want to work with you. All right. Um, the book name. Yep. And you'll see it on this list. Be honest. It's called the call of the wild by Ainsley Arment. And you all are all going to get this. Okay. You're all going to get this. I put it together last night and I was, I had such a good time putting it together. I put together a lot of programs. Like for those of you who don't know me, uh, cause I know we've got a lot of new people here. My thing, I help you remember who you are. You are a magic maker. When you homeschool, you remember how much of a magic maker you are. I empower creative women entrepreneurs to increase their confidence, impact, money, and time freedom by mixing modern with ancient practices. All right. I've been homeschooling for four years. Never thought I'd be here. <laughs> but what I've learned was that homeschooling is the thing I always wanted that I never knew that I wanted. And that right there is, it makes my heart happy. Uh, Ali says, how do you find your remote team? Is it a specific website to find specialists? Great questions. Well, back in, you know, maybe we'll have like a pre-pandemic, like PP, pre-COVID times, PC. Oh, uh, we just asked around in our local community because our helpers, our tutors are in our local community. Okay, and they were already working with homeschool families. And so we would just reach out and be like, hey, here's our situation. We'd love to kind of see if we might have a fit here to work with our sons. And that's how we did it. Uh, you may or may not have success with that right now. Okay, you may have some college kids who are home now and um, who may be majoring in a particular area, maybe their education majors. And they're doing their school classes at home, but they're kind of like, oh my God, I have a lot more time on my hands because they're not out socializing. And maybe they want some extra work. Maybe they'd love to work with your child. Maybe there is uh, an online resource. I don't know of it at this point, but I would guess something like this exists where you can just look for talent. Um, there are other places. I think it's called outschool.com. I've not used it but where they have like classes that take place that your kid can be a part of this class and it's on different you know topics and you know just do a little digging here but for us having a having some private tutors because i think the type of career that Stephen and i both have it's been really 
wonderful. It's really, really wonderful. And then it's allowed our children to get some of that like really deep connection with a teacher who like really knows him and can support him. You know, some of our tutors we've had over a period of time, they assign assignments. Then my job often is like overseeing the doing of the assignments. And then we'll do extra things together, you know, as a family that I, that I know are important, like reading the call of the wild, go seeing the film. When we can travel again, going to museums, you know, going on your adventures and, and just learning about a particular area. That is so cool. I mean, you could do that now. You could go, you know, spin a globe, choose a country and go down deep in your exploration. We actually did that last year. There was a geography fair that took place there. And it was organized by this wonderful woman, Elaine, who lives in my local community, who runs a homeschool STEAM class, which we do that at the local library. We can't meet right now. I've offered up my business Zoom room to Elaine. So the kids who are in that class can meet and I'll be helping my kids, you know, with that meeting that happens on Thursdays. And um, she organized this geography fair last year. And together as a family, we chose Canada as our country to study and we put together this awesome freaking display i had a blast we had such a good time and so one of my best gifts and for my entrepreneurs here you'll get this and maybe those of you who aren't entrepreneurs you'll get it too my one of my greatest gifts okay one thing i love to do of the reading in the books out loud the other thing i love to do projects i am so good at projects because my business is one giant project after the next and so, okay, geography fair, we need to have this, this thing done. Okay, guys, what country are we going to pick? Why do we want to pick that country? How are we going to approach this? What do we want our display to look like? Um, okay, we need to get some supplies for that. Let's print things out. Let's get these things. Let's do this. You do this. You do, Okay, that's really great. I never, okay, what a cool idea. And so you're really like, as a coach, I'm basically just coaching my kids and I'm helping to pull that creativity out of them and really, really beautiful, powerful ways. So, you know, do this, even though maybe it's not required for some geography fair, <laughs> or if your school is very much like, just, you know, do your best with your kids, have fun with it. Like, do you, maybe your ancestors are from a particular area and you wanna go explore that area and like go down the rabbit hole with your kids. Um, we do have, some encyclopedias in our house too that can be helpful like when we did the Canada project we actually did I I think we used and we might have checked out a book from the library that allowed us to go really deep on Canada plus we had some resources here plus we'd been to Canada we love Canada I still love Canada uh, it's a wonderful country so you know think about and, and there's other things you could do maybe you could you know over the weekend we kind of we had to pull down this thing that was on our land. It was a um, ice skating rink that was no longer. And I was like, guys, just get in there and, and break that down. We had an area of our property where people had littered years ago. because they have kind of this big piece of property in an area that you can't walk on. It's like wetlands. Guys, let's get our garbage bags and go in and clean this up. And so there's so much that you can do here. There's so much. And what it doesn't need to be are your kids sitting at a desk or at a table all day. It does not need to be that. It does not need to be that. Move around, get outside, play, you know, as much as you're allowed to in your particular area. I know we're under some, you know, interesting conditions right now. There's Kate. Color together, make things together. We like doing our art. She's a wonderful artist. She's a wonderful painter. I amped up on my art supplies and my creativity supplies. Um, we, she, she makes pictures. You know, it's depending on your children, you just, it's just a new way of engaging with them. You're not sending them out of the house every day to have um, someone else kind of take over. And um, what I wish for you and what I'm holding space for you on is for you to navigate this new normal with excitement and joy and you being around your kids more. I mean, that's for many of you, that's what's going on. You're around your kids more. And I will tell you when this first started happening, I was like, why is this happening to me? Uh, <laughs> and I've just learned to roll with it. I've learned to see it as a gift, absolute gift. Um, this period of time is finite. 
it's not too long where my kids are going to be grown and leaving, leading their own lives, living wherever they're living, maybe not close to me. And so I've seen this as, wow, what a wonderful gift that we get this time. And, um, you know, I'm also real that we take it, you want to get your notebook? We take it year by year. Um, if, if at some point one of my kids is like, I want to go back into whatever, whatever school, I'm not going to be like, no, you can't because we're homeschooling forever. I very much let my kids guide me and then I help create the conditions for what they say they want, you know, and that has worked. That has worked up to now. Um, my business continues to do its thing. I'm really grateful for being able to work online. You know, I've had an online business since Gosh, I got online in 2009. I started my coaching business in 2008, but doing my sessions, you know, by phone. So that was that. And, um, and then I really got onto the internet with, you know, online marketing and email marketing and then leading group programs. I've been doing that since, since 2009. Yeah. And so when this pandemic thing really went down, I said to my husband, I have never been more grateful to have an online business. And homeschool my kids like oh my gosh so while we're all adapting to this new normal my day-to-day -day does not look that different it really doesn't and um, I know for many of you it does and so I just want you to know that I'm here for you uh, you can do this you are doing this you really don't have another option right now <laughs> and it's okay it's okay yeah to be honest as I love that let your kids guide you and you prepare the environment yeah that's it that's it. Okay. So we've got this. Um, so my next steps for you all is I'm going to send you this resource guide. You're going to see some things on it. Um, for those of you, I do have a Facebook group that is really for creative, you know, women entrepreneurs, women who typically are in a service um, based environment with your work. All right. You all have, uh, a, you should have received a link to, to come in there. For those of you who want a deeper level of support, I am going to share with you a few options for getting that deeper level of support. Um, you are going to see a link for you to join my Magic Makers Collective. This is a place where women who are in business, they are you know, serving clientele, they are putting their work out there. You get ongoing coaching and training with me and being in a community of other women who are on this road, okay? Um, this is what we need right now. We need support with each other. Okay, so I'll let you know how you can find out more details on that. And for those of you who want, you know, private support, coaching support with me, I tend not to do one-off sessions, but I've decided to create a special package that um, will give you a deeper level of support if you are navigating especially some changes in your business and you're like, oh my gosh, I need a sounding board. I need some support around doing this. I will share with you um, a way to get that support. Okay. Um, you all are incredible. You've got this. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've got this. We're going to do this and, um, just trust, trust, remember that you're your, your child's greatest teacher. Okay, everyone be well. And I appreciate you. Take care.